Brought to you by Dell. Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Stored Switzerland. This is part of an ongoing series of Chalk Talk videos that we do covering various topics in the storage industry. Today what we're going to focus on is what is cloud storage. It is by far the number one tracked article on our website and I'm sure on many others. So let's talk about what is cloud storage and what does it mean to uh, the user and, and the industry. The big challenge with defining what is cloud storage is the answer really depends on who you are and what you're going to use it for. So I'm going to try to give you a quick high level overview of the various options that are available to you. If you are a user of cloud storage, this is probably what most people would describe as the definition. And as a user, that could be a home, uh, home office, it could be a, a personal use, you're connecting to do a, a variety of things. It could still be a business as well, uh, but the intent is with cloud storage, if you're a consumer, probably is going to be there's storage somewhere out in the internet in a data center that you are not directly attached to. More than likely, you're being billed on a monthly or quarterly basis on the amount that you use. And it's something that can grow or shrink as you need. One of the big differences in most of these things and, and where we look for a, a, a differentiator is if you reduce the amount of storage that you're using, does your monthly cost go down? And so can you shrink your commitment as well as grow your commitment? So as a user, probably the big applications are by far the number one is backup. You've heard all the consumer uh, advertising on backup your PC to this thing or that thing. Basically the same strategy in most of these. Uh, they will identify changed files or blocks, and then as those changes happen or at a given point in time, copy them to some cloud storage device. Number two, and probably a big one now, is, is some form of file sharing. And this can come in the form of collaboration where you're working on a project. It could be uh, personal where you're uh, working on stuff at your office PC and then want to be able to work on it on your home uh, system as well. It could also be uh, sharing between people. So that, that is uh, often uh, signified by some sort of a synchronization strategy. Uh, it can also be where we see a lot, in fact, we use it our, ourselves, is when we have very big videos that we have to send to somebody. Most email systems don't want you to send 250 meg files around, and so you upload it to a website and give a link to somebody. So that's, a, that's a, another uh, real good use case in that environment. So we expect those two to continue. In the um, business area, these two stay big, backup and, and some sort of file synchronization. But also big is archive and some sort of primary storage role. So archive would be the taking old files and, and copying them over to this uh, remotely collected, connected uh, cloud storage uh, environment. Uh, so the difference between that and, say, file synchronization, file synchronization sort of the, is the inverse. The cloud is used just to interconnect multiple hard drives together. In this area, that remote storage area, that is the final resting place so that you don't have the data locally anymore. In many cases, these organizations will offer um, uh, very sophisticated search and text-based searching, things like that, so you can find old data. Some might even offer uh, sort of a lockdown capability so you can prove that once you uploaded it, it hasn't been changed. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on. Primary storage is an interesting use case. In that case, you might have a server, and instead of buying, going out and buying a NAS or going out and buying a, a, a secondary storage device or something like that, you have, they use the local hard drive uh, as a cache, and so the most active data is stored here, but all data is replicated to the cloud. That way, you can have a relatively small storage system to serve up files and do things like that, but have it all essentially automatically backed up in the cloud for you. So that, we see that, especially from a file services standpoint, becoming very popular. Uh, we have clearly seen companies use this as an alternative to a storage network, where we might have multiple servers in the environment connected to a switch, and where we would traditionally have a big storage device there, big and expensive. 
now we're starting to see essentially a small storage appliance that then again connects in the cloud. And then in both cases, what these devices are doing is tracking and making sure that the most active data stays local, and then as it changes, it automatically replicates to the cloud for you. So very, very valuable capability, and one that we think, uh, especially in the small to medium-sized market, we think will continue to grow. Uh, of course, the downside here is if you have what we would call a miss or a cache miss, where you go to access a file or, or data that's not on these local devices, then you have a delay, right? So it, at that point, it becomes how fast is the connection between you and your cloud storage provider. The other thing that's interesting that I haven't talked about from a what is cloud storage perspective is what happens when all the data gets up here. Well, almost all cloud providers will provide the capability to replicate data to another location. So that way, especially in these two cases and in your backup and synchronization capabilities, data is sent to the cloud and then automatically replicated somewhere else so that if wherever this particular data center is uh, becomes unavailable, you can still get your data because it's replicated somewhere else. The more sophisticated services as an option will allow you to replicate it to more than one location. That brings us to using cloud in larger uh, organizations. And that's where we start to talk about if we can now replicate data between multiple locations, it might make sense if I'm doing some of this backup or collaboration or synchronization, if I have a user on the other side of the world, instead of having them come all the way back here for data, it might make sense for the ha to have them go there. So that's, a, that's another um, strategy and it's sort of a, almost a content distribution capability that cloud storage brings. The second part of this is the infrastructure or the uh, product, if you will, that these guys use for cloud storage. Because this has got to be something different than what we have traditionally used in legacy storage. So now we're moving from the consumer to the business to the actual business of running a cloud storage uh, provider. So in this part, what is cloud storage? We're really talking about the, the guys that actually run the business of a cloud storage. And what we're seeing be the dominant factor in these environments is some sort of a, a very scalable infrastructure, typically made up of nodes of servers that all have internal disk capacity and they're interconnected together. And what that gives the cloud storage provider is the ability to continue to add capacity very quickly as they continue to add customers. So it gives them immense scaling, while at the same time, it's a single point of management, so it makes it very easy. So sometimes you might hear the term, well, this is a cloud storage uh, system or device, and what the person is actually referring to is the physical hardware that would go in the data center that provides, that the provider uses to provide capacity to their customers. So that's another example of what cloud, cloud storage might be. So again, it really depends on, on your lens into the market. If you're a, a consumer, prosumer, you're probably looking at some remotely connected thing that you're doing backup and file sharing with. If you're a business, you're probably doing this and you probably might be looking at it for archive or uh, maybe even primary storage. We think that this uh, use case, especially in the file serving area, uh, can be a big one. And then finally, if you hear somebody talking about what is cloud storage, we may also be talking about what's being used here. What's happening though with, with this type of product is this seems like a good idea for some data centers. And so then you'll start to hear the term cloud storage or what they call private cloud storage. And that's at a high level taking this sort of a concept and moving it into a local data center. So a large organization that has thousands of employees may leverage this uh, sort of capability as well. And then finally, there's what we call hybrid cloud. So again, this would be a maybe medium to large size business that has implemented this sort of cloud uh, storage infrastructure. 
And then they're going to leverage a public cloud provider as sort of a secondary option so they could fail back or, or burst out additional capacity when needed. So let's say you had a uh, environment where you need a lot of storage for a little bit on a project and then you could thin it down. That's where you might burst out to the cloud, let it work, thin it back down and come back in. So again, cloud storage can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. A lot of it uh, depends on your perspective into it. What you have to look for is what makes the most sense for your environment and kind of put yourself in, in this position. If you're a user, if you're a business, if you're a provider, or if you're a very large business. So that in a nutshell is what is cloud storage. Again, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you very much for tuning in.